Hi, my name is Gary Peacock, and uh, welcome to Homespun Tapes. Today with me uh, for this presentation will also be Mike D'Amico on guitar. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Happy Trial for this opportunity. And uh, for the next several minutes, we'll be exploring three areas of uh, the playing of the bass, which I'll call the physical, the mental, and the intuitive. And those terms are only meant to be indicative of particular areas of an overall process and not to be definitive in any sense. The uh, other aspect that I wanted to point out or other feature is that these three areas or three aspects of this process really aren't disconnected or separate, but they interconnect with each other as we'll see. The actual physical approach to the instrument that I've discovered is that uh, there should be or it tends to be a connection between the, the, the way and what is done with the arms and the hands and the shoulders and how that impacts on the playing to start with. Um, the physical, for example, it's, uh, I found it very useful to before even playing an instrument or be playing any sound is simply to stay in one position that's comfortable and mentally go through the body. Uh, you can start with the feet and just get a sense of the feet up to the ankles and then into the lower leg, into the knees, into the thighs, into the back, particularly the lower back, into the stomach area, into the chest area, into the neck area, into the top of the shoulders, and then throughout the arms, and then into the head area. And as you do this without playing, you're simply sitting there doing this, you may discover blocks or tension or even pain. And 
what to do about that. My experience is that simply observing it tends to disperse it or tends to, to unblock it. So rather than trying to release a particular tension, it's just observing it. And uh, usually does the, does the trick. Again then, in the approach of actually playing an, a note or playing a pitch, if raising the left hand, again going, being in touch with the body, and notice what is being done with the shoulder. Perhaps it's this, raising the shoulder, and simply get in touch with that. Usually, if you do that, the shoulder would simply drop by itself. Um, then observing the hand, whether the hand is at an angle like this, which is, doesn't work too well, or whether there's a smooth arc in the arm. One of the common problems that develops in playing bass is over-pressing uh, or over-exertion with the muscles that isn't necessary. And a good exercise that I found was to pick a note, for example, or a pitch, for example, B flat, and play this pitch with pizzicato by beginning with feeling the finger pushing the string down to the fingerboard and then producing the sound. And doing this, first of all, with the least amount of pressure. If it's the least amount of pressure, it will probably sound something like this. Not yet a sound. Gradually a little more, a sound begins to emerge, still not very clean. Finally, we reach a point where there is a firm sound. Beyond this point of pushing down, it's just wasted energy. Now, I'm pulling the same way, and I'm pushing or squeezing twice as hard. It's completely unnecessary. So one usually must take some time in doing, going over this process of getting in touch with the sensitivity find this place where further squeezing or, or energy used to push down is useless, just wasted energy. Then with the second finger, same way, each doing each finger independently. Almost there. And as you do this, Again, mentally go through your arms and your shoulders and your feet. See if there's something stuck there. And observing it usually releases it. Then the first finger. Next observing particularly the shoulder and the arm and realizing that this pressure that's being used doesn't need to be squeezed as much as it needs in a sense for the shoulder and the arm simply to relax so that the actual arm weight is what's producing the pressure rather than squeezing. It's as though you were holding on to a, trying to just hold on to a pipe or something that's like this with just, the, just letting the arm drop. If the arm does that and drops, the shoulder automatically drops as well. Then continuing across all strings. Again, always paying attention to what's going on in the body, what's happening physically. When this, this becomes expanded then, when, if, for example, if we're going to play a scale, and if we play, for example, just a, uh, a C major scale, about this speed,
we're paying most attention not to the sound quality, but most attention now is just to the physical, just to the arm weight. And the relaxation of the shoulder. Now, the second part then is really the mental organization which we've covered knowing that this is a C major scale, for example. But now listening also for the quality of the sound and the intonation, including that also in the physical. Looking at this in terms of a scale, we realize two things. One is that the scale as I've played it involves three strings. Secondly, there are several different ways to play that particular scale. This way, which we've done, then all on one string, Again, first just the physical. And as you uh, go through playing this, where you may, you may have seen me flinch a bit there. That was a reaction to the being out of tune. Again, simply working with the, the, the physical. Slightly out of tune. Now combining the, that with also with sound quality. In playing a scale this way then, we've done two things. We've been paying attention to the body physically, but we've also been paying attention to the pitches. The third most important thing that I can think of that I think is relevant is that we're not only just hearing pitches, but we're intuiting tones. And for right now, the, what I mean by a tone is simply, the simplest way to express it is what we have learned as children or whatever is in solfeggio, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, for example, in a major scale. They represent tones, and those tones have specific, sound, specific qualities, dynamic states, orientations. So now, combining all those, although you won't hear the tones unless you're intuiting them, it would be the same. And one can take a particular exercise this quite a ways. For example, you could restrict the playing of that particular scale to one string, or you could restrict it to two strings, and there would be these possibilities. Or it could be this. And other possibilities. It could be three strings starting on here, from this point. Or it could be four strings. A person asked me once, what's the value of doing that? The value is this that I found. Number one, if we pay attention to what sh uh, shifts occur in us physically when we do it in all those different positions, that allows us to see what part of our body may be out of line when we're crossing strings. It allows us to be clear about the actual information that's on the board. What are the notes in here? It allows us to continue to reinforce the tonal aspect as well.